humans are obsessed with what other individuals are thinking. Um, when we talk with one another, when we think about what other individuals are going to be doing, we routinely take into account other individuals' mental states, our beliefs, knowledge, ignorance, and so on. And this kind of empathy, or sometimes lack of empathy, allows us, we think, to predict and manipulate other individuals' behavior and beliefs. And indeed, introspection about our own beliefs and our own knowledge and our own intentions allows us to plan and to think about the future, to engage in a kind of mental time traveling where we can um, anticipate and think about alternative strategies, for example. So a full-blown theory of mind is, seems to be essential, many people have argued, for human social interactions, language, and culture. And you can see this really vividly, I think, in our criminal system, where often the crime itself is a lot less important than the intent lurking behind the crime. So when we're trying to decide a punishment, for example, we think about did the, did the um, accused intend to commit the crime? Did he, was the crime premeditated? Did the individual have knowledge beforehand? And that often is much more important and of much greater significance than the crime itself. So for example, you can see this illustrated in the Murdoch phone hacking um, scandal that's now gripping England. The question that fascinates everyone is not just the fact that hacking occurred, but the degree to which Rupert, Rupert and James Murdoch knew about it. Somehow the damage will be seen to be perceived as less malevolent and less sort of evil if the Murdochs were simply negligent and were in fact ignorant about whether a crime was being committed. However, if it looks as though the Murdochs had knowledge about this, we're going to be much more outraged and, and, and so on. The hacking is the crime, but what we really are concerned about is the knowledge that underlies, or the lack of knowledge that underlies the crime.